Good morning, my name's Matt and welcome back to my channel. If you're subscribed to my channel, you'll know that I do a lot of refurbishment work um, and I love doing uh, sort of building projects, that sort of thing. So, um, but this, this um, title of this video is Advice from Samuel Leeds because I recently went to one of his crash courses and learned about different types of property investing. And, um, and obviously because I like doing refurbs, one of the strategies that I um, have been researching and looking to use is a refurbishment uh, kind of deal. So it's called BRRR, which means basically buy, refurbish, refinance, rent. And um, what it basically is, is you buy a property um, at a below market value price, um, and then you do the property up, make it look good, then refinance the property, so you remortgage it, and you basically take out the money that you've invested in the property in the deposit and for the refurb, um, at the new higher value price, hopefully higher value price, um, and you usually get about 80% of the different, 80 to 75% of the difference between the starting value and the um, the end value. So, I've got a couple of properties that I'm viewing up north today, and um, I'm going to be showing you around because I'm going to do a video when I'm walking around. Um, the first one is a property that. Uh, I've been looking at for a little while and trying to negotiate with it so I pre-negotiated before going up to make sure they'd be happy with the sort of price that I'd be looking to offer. Um, it's it's about it'll be about eighty-five thousand um, pounds. The but I, I'm going to try and get it for about eighty-two, eighty-three. Um, if it goes for eighty-five, I'll still make quite a bit of money on it. It'll be about 30, 38 percent return on investment. Uh, those are just my estimates, but basically it's in a student town um, with two universities and a hospital nearby, um, so lots of nurses and doctors and that sort of thing, um, they usually share houses and so do students, so it's a good area for it, there's not a lot of student houses, um, so it's not as saturated as a lot of different areas in England are, like Liverpool um, and Leeds and that sort of thing. So. I'm, I'm optimistic about it, but I'm going to do my market research when I get there. Um, but the main thing is I'm going to talk to you about the actual um, structural condition of the property and what needs to be done to it because that's what this channel is about. So I'm going to be walking around. Um, the first house is a two bed, so it's got two bedrooms upstairs and it's got a sitting room downstairs and a cellar underneath underneath the building but, but still got a window uh, to the street so I'm going to turn the cellar into a sitting room and the current living room into a bedroom um, and the two rooms upstairs I'm going to put en suites in because putting an en suite in the rooms upstairs um, I've seen on the spare room all the en suites and en suite rooms in that sort of area go for between all bills included between 110 and 120 pounds per week um, so so basically you can get quite a high return on investment just by adding some en suites in there um, and I'm gonna do some really high quality ones so we'll see what I can do um, and see if they accept my offer um, but one of the main things that I'm gonna be looking for in this first property is the head height in the cellar downstairs because it's not always that tall in cellars um, so that's the main thing, and then also in the cellars you usually have a have damp issues um, because you've got because it's underground, usually underneath the DPC line, which is the damp proof course um, that usually stops the damp from travelling up the brick. Um, but I've got a solution for that, so I'm I'm pretty optimistic about it. It's a it's not tanking. Tanking is a is usually when you paint like a waterproof layer onto the outside on the inside of the the cellar walls and, and the floor and stuff. Um, what, I, what I'm planning to do is to put stud walls up and put damp proof membrane on the backs, just like I did on the current property, um, and then put a damp proof membrane on the floor um, and and tile over the whole thing on the floor, um, put uh, underfloor heating in the floor. Uh, there's a really cool underfloor heating that you can find on eBay. Um, I'll put a link in the description for it. Um, it's called warm-up underfloor electric heating and they're like 200 kilowatts per square meter 
and you can, you can control it by an app. So you can heat the floor up um, on a like on a on a schedule and also with your app with your phone. So um, it's going to make the cellar nice and warm, um, and they're actually really really energy efficient. So shouldn't cost too much either and make the students quite happy um, so that's what I'm planning to do check out the cellar check out the condition of the property if it's really crap I probably won't get it but I'm optimistic because the images look good so um, I'm gonna give you an update walk around the property um, and show you what it looks like inside and the second property is has already been modernized but it does still need some work it's a bit bigger than the first one um, but because it needs less work um, it, it's a higher price but because it needs less work I don't have to invest much as much money into it but it's a larger property so it's, it's an interesting one because I might be able to charge more for the rooms because it's a larger property um, but this one is at £125,000 it's got three bedrooms I want to turn it into a four bed all with ensuite rooms uh, and it should make about 35% return on investment at that sort of rate. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about how I've calculated return on investment later on in the video but um, yeah I just thought I'd give you a quick introduction as I'm driving up to the north of England to look at these two houses. So I'll speak to you a little bit later on and give you a walk around the properties. See you in a bit. So this is the outside. You can see it's got it's a terrace. It's got a cellar in it. So this is the light to the cellar. I think the window probably is big enough to open up and uh, make an opener. Um, because you've got enough space down here stop water coming in. Give that a little measure. So that is 700 by 50, 52, 520. Got quite a nice front door. All the houses on the street are pretty much student houses. Um, there's a lot of letting signs up for student housing. So this is the inside. Got wooden floors. Needs to be prepped a little bit. You could probably put tiles down here, they feel pretty solid. Wall there with an open top. Probably need to put that all the way up to the top. This is the living room. All seems to be stud walls. Just go upstairs. There's a junction box here, uh, which was put in by the council, apparently. Wooden floors upstairs as well. Hello, Max. Say hello. Some of the electrics look like they need to be redone. This room is good size. Probably put an ensuite in there. Space here is putting it on sweet next to the door. This is putting in 900ml shower tray. In. You could put a 900ml shower tray in on this side, sink in the middle, pull it over there, all the other way around. And the soil stack is at the back of the building. Soil stack is out there. The windows are all single glazing and there's no central heating uh, in the house. 
uh, the wooden frames. The walls are quite solid because they're stone. All the external walls are solid. There's a bit of damp there, but the owner said that he was hanging his coats up after going climbing, and it looks like that's probably true because there's hangers there. Uh, let's have a little look. This is the other room. So, this room is approximately three meters forty in length by ceiling there and a crack line. Single glazing at the back here and there you can see the there's a little there's a bathroom unit there. These are all the houses in the area. Apparently these houses were built in eighteen hundreds so fairly old. Gonna go downstairs through the kitchen. There's a hole there in the wall. This is all plasterboard. Um, alright Adam. <laughs> Just gonna show the kitchen. Yeah, that's alright, no worries. This is the kitchen. Whole kitchen refurb. That's quite a nice bench though, actually. <laughs> Is that yours? Yeah, it's. Uh, you bring it with I you? know, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I'm going to paint it. It's a little bit vintage, isn't it? I've left it original. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The shelving's actually alright as well. Okay. Alright, that's the kitchen. The kitchen is a reasonable size. This is the back bathroom. So it's a one bath with a boiler here. Do you mind if I just use the tap? Yeah, sure. The hot tap. Boiler oh, turns on straight away. And the water is hot. Plumbing's working because the owner is a plumber. <laughs> yeah, apart from the basin and stuff. Yeah. It all needs to be out when you make that much, yeah. then you just put it out. Yeah. There's a slight dip in the ceiling there. I'm not sure why. Everything seems to be made from stone or stud balls. Right. Which is kind of good. Because mm. you can move. Oh, sorry. Oh, just got you found, oh, you come outside? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I know you can alter it all around, can't you? Yeah. Which is a lot easier. Yeah. Apart from this, it's the only solid wall. Okay. So that's probably holding up the middle of the building? Yeah. Okay, so that's a, mm -hmm. that's a structural wall, is it? Yeah, it's definitely the only solid one. That's pretty much halfway between the front and back. Yeah. Uh, a little bit closer to the back, but... So that's what you'd have to leave that with. Upstairs, I mean, you could rip the whole thing out, couldn't you? Yeah. Start again. Yeah. Do it to your own configuration. Yeah. Fine. This is the outside. Got a nice little courtyard. There's a bit of moss on the floor here. 
but it's quite a nice place to hang out in the summer, maybe a smoking area. And it leads outside to, to the back street, which you can also access. So you can access the house from the back and the front. does need a lot of work done to it though, so let me know what you think. Like I said, all the plumbing seems to be working. There's a lot of internal work to do. Really? Yeah. What, you got to come join it, did you? Yeah, I'm certainly could tell that. I've always wanted one now. Yeah. It is actually quite a nice like, opening. Well, well, yeah, the sun, in the morning, the sun starts it's here, nice basically. Thing. So, All right. in the summer, I, I normally say, hey, that's why I've got the half door So this is what they described as a sunny aspect. Mm. Like, yeah, you yeah. get sun, obviously not in winter, but generally you get sun from 6 a.m. Oh, sorry, mate. 6 a.m. till 2 p.m. You know what that? It's probably just slightly caught. Sorry, I shouldn't have flashed it, I just saw it. I'll check it. There is a bit of damage here to the plasterboard. This is plasterboard directly on top of brick. Stone on the inside. And the pipes are all running in the skirting board. Okay. That goes straight to the outside. Drainage. Did you help me manage the kitchen quickly? Yeah. Alright, thank you. So the kitchen is 3.46 meters and um, 2.56 Thank you very much. And now I'm just going to go downstairs and show the cellar. Yeah, I won't do Oh, okay. Yeah, that'd be cool. This is the cellar. I forgot about that pipe. There was a Why pipe. Is there, there was a pipe just there. Is that gas you know? Gas, yeah. Don't ask me why they've put a pipe across it. It's yeah. Ridiculous. Okay. So this is a cellar. I'm five I'm five ten and it just touches my head. So it's about one point eight tall. And these are the joists for the kitchen. Um they could probably be painted to maintain some head height. Floor is concrete. I wonder if we could take the floor down. I don't. I don't know why they've done that. It doesn't make much sense, does it? Yeah. Cause I, I'm all right to walk along here, and as soon as you get to there, it's like bang. Yeah. No, I don't know why they've done it. It might have been previous uh, pavement. It looks like some kind of pavement, doesn't it? Mm, so. That's strange. Depends how tall you are. Yeah. If you're that high, you're not going to be bothered. But for me, I'm dead on six foot. I can just, I've never banged my head yet yeah. being in it. Look at that though, it looks like an old curb or something. Mm, it's odd. <laughs> can't, I can't work out why it looks like that. Yeah. This looks like it's been tanked before. Is it? Yeah, it's got like tanking material on it. Oh, sorry. Right. It's quite loose, because it's obviously because it's under the DPC line. Yeah. That's the raw stone. Yeah. And then to stop the, the, the Damp coming through, it's been yeah. painted with a waterproof layer. Yeah, that's what I was going to do. I was going to yeah. yeah, 
I would have said uh, get some sort is it some sort of lime plaster and you lime plaster it and then paint yeah. it over the top. But you've got to redo probably every ten years. Yeah. Or something like that. I'm not. Yeah. Never got around to it, obviously. But. Mm-hmm. This could either be retanked or stud walls put up with insulation. It does look like the tanking is coming off quite evenly, so it would need to be tanked properly. That all needs to be boxed in. So that is... Is this the consume unit? Where's the consume unit? Is it upstairs somewhere? It's top right. It's a very... Okay, so it's a very old consume unit. It needs to consume unit change. Yeah. Switch off before removing waste. It's got a new gas, it's got a new electric meter though. Oh, it's on a key? Yeah. I've, I've it's on a key. Well, oh, that's good for you though, isn't it? Because you don't live here. Yeah. And the gas meter looks fairly new. I could probably be moved over though and put in a nice boxed area. And then the whole house is stone and wood. You could have. Um, I mean, if I was in your shoes, I'd lift the gas meter up. Yeah. Right in the corner. Yeah. Consume unit right in the corner and then just have a tiny yeah. box and keep a bit more yeah, space. Yeah. Exactly. It's nice actual sitting room area though, isn't it? It's good. I watched the whole World Cup here last year. Quite World nice Cup? Mm. Yeah. Every day. That's right. Hence why I've got a couch, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Everything is stone and wood. They're not, they're not damp for anything, are they? Yeah. I think I'd need to have, um, obviously, a building survey. Mm. Yeah. A proper building survey. Yeah. Um, no, I, I don't, not like I don't believe survey, you. I, I never got a bank. Yeah. Um, a survey, just, I'll get, I'll get builders to look at yeah. the house and seem to not Yeah, you know everyone there, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, should we just close and measure this room quickly? Yeah. My one right of there. From the stairs over there. Thank you very much for your help. Okay. Up to this edge from the stairs is 3.76 meters. And from the recess, oh, that's nice. It is 3.76 meters. Okay, that's cool. I want to check the depth here as well, because I might actually draw this. I could draw basically draw this up just to give it some. Three thirty in that recess. Yeah. All right. Thank you. That's pretty much it, I think. Well, well this is like my idea was. This is the opening to the outside. I was thinking you could actually change this to an opening window. Well, yeah, if that's but not an opening window. Is it? It's just a normal. Yeah. Well. I didn't want an opening window because I've just got a feeling like when we are kids and they're sellers <laughs> yeah. they so used to like... go things through the cellar. Yeah, yeah. So I'd obviously need it. <laughs> <laughs> I could see what would happen, I'll leave that yeah. window open, you'd be sat here and kids chuck Oh chucking stuff. Oh, I thought you meant what, what people grabbing nose or kid. something. Oh you used to <laughs> I work round here and it used to be the thing to do at night with the sellers and run past and chuck oh, something through the cellar. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, that window, I think, was it under £20? I wanted a wooden one, so yeah. a bit better, but yeah. I, I think it was probably like another 20% and it could have been an opening, yeah. an opener on it. Okay, cool. All right, I think that's probably much the That would have if you think so. Yeah, the floor probably needs levelling out, I think. I've noticed that actually. Mm. I didn't want to do it wrong with it because I thought well, it, it does its job. Yeah. I thought I'll just slime lime plaster it and paint it over the top. I won't. Yeah. It's just to, for me to sit in here really. Yeah. So I wasn't bothered about. I mean, I've looked at a few sellers on the street and they've gone the full hog, proper plasterboard walls and got laminate floor and down and yeah. everything like, and they look really good. But I wasn't. I actually like the joists, so my idea was to spray paint the joists. I just like the look of the wood, it's nice. Yeah. I think I'd probably want to latex it and level it, so you might lose a bit of head height in here. Yeah, you would. Because I want to tile it. 
put it there where it wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, uh, if you leveled it. Oh, this is the highest point. Which is the one eight one eight three. Six on that. Yeah. Yeah. One eight one, maybe one eight. One eighty there. One eight one there. And here is so that would be... 184, so you lose like three centimetres just from there to there. So the highest point is just touching my head and I'm 5 to 10. Okay. So I didn't level it, I thought, well... Yeah. With me being six foot, I have to bend over the time. Yeah. I wasn't bothered about making a very really good job of it. I was going to put the window and paint it up nice and just leave that out there. Yeah. Yeah, because you were just going to live in it for work anyway, mm. really. One thing that's bugging me is there's no central heating. Because no. that, I think, would be a big job. Essentially, it's going to... Where would I put the border? I'd just swap that multi-point for a combi. Mm. I would have the heat. Combi, yeah, I've got... Because I've done a, I did a combi system in the last place that I've been. fastest it was way nice. to do it yeah. is your floor and return. Yeah. Run it in boxing in the corner. Lock down, lock down, lock down. Yeah. And straight upstairs. Yeah. Putting it essentially to me is absolutely easy because it's already empty. Yeah. It's the easiest job to do it on. Yeah. You Where's the soil stack? You know. Behind the toilet. Okay. So it runs at the back of the building? Yeah, it's out the back. Okay. So. <coughs> oh, is that the only one? Okay. So all stuff is at the back. Manhole is just there. So that comes down, goes into the manhole. You can probably put another one in exactly the same position that next door has. Because they've got one there. Goes into that soil stack. Uh, that manhole. So the manholes are pretty much the same position next door and there. This is a nice area, shooting area, so it would rent out well. And a lot of these have got lock conversions on top. This could probably do with a lock conversion as well. Alright, there we go. So I only managed to film at one property, which is the one that you've just seen. Uh, but that was the one that I was most interested in, luckily. So. Um, did a little walk around, showed you all the issues with the property, what needs to be fixed. Uh, I managed to view another three properties on the day and now I've got a, a much better understanding of the area, um, which properties are good, which which um, which properties are at the, what kind of price range you can get them for and um, what room rates are. So I went into a few different, um, what they call student letting places um, and then just knocked on student housing doors and then had a little pop in, pop my head inside, saw what the rooms are like, what they're paying for them. Um, so it was a really good market research kind of trip. And also those four properties that I viewed, the one that I was most interested in is still an all right deal, um, but it's not, it's not the 38% return on investment that I was thinking. So as you can see when you're walking around, the I, originally I wanted to put the top rooms, turn the top rooms into en suites, but the, um, thinking now that they'd only be good as um, normal double rooms so the they go for about 90 to 95 pound a week um, per room so it makes the return on investment approximately 27% uh, rather than 38% which is not bad so I'm still considering it but uh, I might end up passing the deal on to someone else um, yeah so uh, there's still money to be made if you're flipping it. it there's still about fifteen thousand pounds to be made because the property is at eighty. I've, I managed to agree a price with the owner because it was an owner viewing. Uh, I managed to agree a price at 
86 sort of thousand. Um, he would want he wanted 90 for it, um, but the revaluation price there are houses going in good condition in the area for about 120 to 125 so there's a good amount of money there to be made um, or refinance um, money to be put, pulled out so it's a it's a it's a good deal and um, I'm gonna have a little think and look about look at the figures when I get home get a couple of quotes in from builders um, overall very good day um, did a load of market research stuck my head in a few properties I quite like the area it's a really nice area of the country um, and the student market is actually booming so yeah overall good day and um, I'll give you an update soon on what I decide to do thanks a lot for watching see you soon